What's up, students? I hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, a kinematics lesson that's going to talk about acceleration. I'm going to give you the definition, the variables, the units. I'm going to show you a couple different graphs showing acceleration. I'll give you two acceleration examples. This is going to be good for anybody taking the SAT physics exam, AP Physics 1, my home state, New York State reads exam, any high school 101 basic type physics course. Let's get into this. So we can write the definition of acceleration in words, but it's much easier in variables. So in words, it's the rate at which velocity changes per unit time. Oh my gosh, holy Toledo. The variable is just A, lowercase a. So I'm going to say A is going to be equal to a change in velocity, delta V, per unit time. This is the definition in a variable form for acceleration. And we know that delta V is going to be V final minus V naught or V initial, however you want to write it. So I can rewrite this as well as V minus V naught over T, which then I can do a number of different things. You'll see this written on your reference table is V equals V naught plus A T. That's just a derivation of this. So really we're going to see the acceleration formula written in one of two ways. This is the more traditional way. This is what you're going to see on most reference tables. But this way is the same exact thing, much easier to use. It's easier to use because people hate fractions and because you don't have to remember what this delta V means. But if we use this traditional definition of delta V over T to sit, look for the units, on top here we have meters per second and time is second. So the unit for acceleration is going to be meters per second squared. Guys, don't forget this, please. So many times I got to take points off of a test because students write this and they come to me and they're like, I just forgot the square. I'm like, no, you told me a velocity. You didn't tell me an acceleration. That's not just a squared. That's a completely different variable. So guys, please, meters per second squared. Acceleration is a vector. So that means it has a direction associated with it. Most commonly, we're just going to say we have a positive acceleration or a negative acceleration. And this generally means that the speed is increasing, and this generally means that the speed is decreasing. I usually tell my students that if the acceleration helps velocity, it's positive. If it hurts velocity, it's negative. When I say hurts velocity, it decreases it. It slows it down. But in both of these cases, we see speed is increasing or decreasing. So speed changes. There has to be a change in speed. But there is a change in speed. Acceleration can be constant. So a lot of times this could be a little counterintuitive for students that acceleration is constant, but the speed's changing. What the heck is going on? If the change in velocity is, is zero, then acceleration has to be zero. Change is zero, A has to be zero. But A can be a constant number, but V is changing. And I'm going to show you that graphically. If I were to look at a velocity versus time graph, and let's say the slope of that line, it's something like this. Well, I can ask, what variable does this slope represent? Well, we know that slope is delta y over delta x. Some students still have this confusing. Just think if you were going to stand on a table, do you want to stand on an x or you want to stand on a y? So what that is, that's delta y, that's delta v over delta t. So this, I can't really say is the slope m. I know that delta v over delta t, the fancy math word is m for slope, but we call this a. So the acceleration is now denoted in this graph. And now we can put a label on this graph and, and look at a couple things. Here's what I mean. Is this slope changing or is it constant? It's constant. Now I said in, in math, we use this fancy word called slope. But in physics, we get rid of the fancy math word and we plug in the fancy physics word. So now instead of saying a constant slope for a V versus T graph, I'm going to say a constant acceleration. So that means that acceleration not going to be constant. And this slope is positive. We get rid of the fancy math word and put the fancy physics word in. We know that this card has a positive acceleration and that acceleration is constant. So if I want to come graph this now an A versus T graph, well, how do I draw a constant acceleration in the positive quadrant? Three meters per second squared, three meters per second squared, three meters per second squared, three meters per second squared. That sounds pretty constant to me. So these two drawings are the same exact card. Just one is a V versus T and one is an A versus T. And we see that if this is like, say, V equals zero meters per second, and this is like nine meters per second, we had a change in V from here to here, but this remained constant unchanging. And that's what I mean when I say that you can have a changing speed. You have to have a changing speed, 
but A can also be constant. Now, yeah, A can vary, but in the courses we're going to be dealing with, most of the time, A is just going to be regular and constant and not changing. If you want to make your driver's ed teacher, you want to sound like a know-it-all, in, in the driver's ed car, you got this pedal here and you got this pedal here. And it's crazy in a couple of years, that's not going to be the truth. And they call this the brake and they call this the accelerator or the gas pedal. Make sure you correct your driver's ed teacher and tell them this is not called the brake. This is also called the accelerator, right? Because acceleration is a delta V over T. Well, this just makes my acceleration positive. This makes my acceleration negative. This slows me down. So this is really called the accelerator, the gas pedal. And this is called the negative accelerator, the brake. So fun way to look and mess with your driver's ed teacher or... If you want to mess with your mom, you're coming up to a red light, you got to scream, Mom, red light, hit the accelerator. But don't forget to add in, in the negative direction, so that they hit the brake and not the gas. You know what I mean. Dad jokes forever. Let's look at some examples. So in example one, we got a car that's tra that was traveling 20 meters per second, now traveling 32 meters per second, three seconds later. What was the acceleration of the car? So was, right? That was the initial speed. Now, this is the final speed. And let me put those in different colors just so they stand out. So we had some initial velocity here. We had some final velocity here. We had some T here, and we want to know A. A is equal to delta V over T, which is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity over T. So the final velocity was 32 meters per second. Always put in units, guys. It's a good habit to form. 20 meters per second divided by 3 seconds. We see that the acceleration is going to be equal to 4 meters per second squared. Acceleration is positive. That means the car should have sped up. So that's a good way to check yourself. In example 2, we got a car that's speeding at 32 meters per second and sees those po po boop, 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 and slows down to 20 meters per second in 2 seconds. What is the acceleration of this car? So we have now the initial velocity sees the po po, final velocity, time. What is the A? A is going to be equal to delta V over T. Guys, I always write the formula. I don't skip steps, which is going to be V final minus V initial. This is why students are always like, when you do it, I get it. But when I do it, I don't. Well, that's because students like to skip steps. They don't like to put units and things like that. The final velocity here is 20 meters per second. So we can see it's going to be a little bit different than initially. It, the initial was 32 meters per second. And this did this over two seconds. So we see that this car is a minus 6 meters per second squared. This means that it's slowed down. Guys, for more content throughout the year, click right here. Please tell all your friends that you found the greatest physics channel ever. I'll put some more content over here so you can check it out. I'll put the entire kinematics and maybe I'll something over here or over here, over here. Until I see you guys on the next one, guys, stay positive. Work really, really hard. Always please be kind to other people. I'll catch you on the next one.